Hey, what's going on YouTube and welcome to the third ever, wait, is this the third or is this the fourth one of these we're doing? I can't remember, I think it's the fourth one that we're doing, Beige Carpet After Party live stream Review. Uh, I'll need to check that out if it's the third or the fourth one, I can't remember. Either way, it's related to the FB, FFBE Updates live stream number 64 that we just finished watching. Um, and I've got a fine collection of folks here um, who are you know, above my heads who are all going to say hello to themselves. But our goal here tonight is just to talk a little bit about what we just saw, what we uh, are excited about, what we're not so excited about, you know, what we thought about the whole event, um, and uh, you know, just kind of share some like hot take opinions of some some people who were like in the community. And so here we are. I'm gonna let them all say hello to themselves or to to each other and to you, um, and then we'll dive right into some questions and some slides and stuff like that. So take it away, guys. Uh, what's up, guys? Thanks again, Gert, for inviting me to talk about the very exciting live stream. There was much content to cover, and we might be here for a long time as we discuss it all. Maybe even longer than the live stream, which has happened before. What's going on, everybody? It's good to be back. And, you know, I, I really can't quite wrap my head around how excited I am to talk about all of this. It, it was hard to even think about how many slides there might be tonight. So we'll try to keep this concise. Uh, hey there, everybody. Sart here. Uh, thank you so much for having me. And um, yeah, it it was very, very exciting, very riveting. Um, I, I laughed, I cried, and I cried a lot more. So yeah, let's get to it. Yeah. Hi, everybody. Here's Cloud in Darkness here. And I hope we have a good time with this uh, recap. And uh, boy, it was a fun live stream, wasn't it? <laughs> I had a good time with the chat. <laughs> chat was fun. Uh, but let's let's dive into some questions. Here we go, right right at the gate. Number one, of what you saw tonight, what are you most looking forward to as one of the two things, or maybe even both of them? Because I think of myself as both of these, um, as a player and as someone who creates videos. Uh, Barry, I know you don't create anything. I think you have before though, right? Nope. You never have. Just, you're just nope. You're just a wonderful guest. I'm a great leech. <laughs> Take it away, guys. Uh, so from specifically what we saw on the stream, I guess of the two things they showed, the thing I'm looking forward to is the 200 something free polls we're getting. Uh, but as uh, we, they didn't really show it on the stream, but I would expect we're still gonna get at least some of the 10K Lapis that came with this vision world in JP. So hopefully they give that as well. Oh, that wasn't on the stream at all. So, yeah. And as a creator, um, you know, it's like Dark Visions, Vision World. So that would be a whole bunch of videos to do. And the most thing I'm looking forward to are the questions of what if I don't have the units I used in the videos that I do make? <laughs> Good stuff. Uh, so as a player, again, I, I like free pools as well. Free is always fun. I desperately need an Ihana and a Red Wing Cecil. So... I heard Cloud is coming, so that's a cool thing, but I don't care. Um, I'm not a creator, so the most exciting creative thing that I saw was probably Tony's sweater. Oh, we're getting to the sweaters. Just give me a second. <laughs> <laughs> um, yeah, I guess uh, for me... Uh, as a player, free pulls, of course, are always nice. Um, I do like World of Visions events just because they feel different from Dark Visions. I've never been a big fan of Dark Visions events, but World of Visions I like because usually uh, it feels fresh. The art's usually really good. It's usually um, linked up to some game in the series or some game outside of uh, Final Fantasy that you really like and enjoy. So uh, I will enjoy that aspect of it. Um, I do hope it's uh, shared rank one because those are most of the World of Visions are and that I, I like that aspect of it as well. Um, and then, yeah, as a creator, you know, I'll, um, I'll just enjoy, you know, showing how Esther and Sylvie can go in and rock another World of Visions event. For sure, for sure. Clad? As a player, as everybody else said, I'm looking forward to the free pools because who doesn't like free blues and yellows and a bunch of rainbows, of course, you know? Like, I really need more, more room for my units, of course. And as a creator, I'm looking forward to using the power of the almighty Golbez to meteor everything to death. <laughs> Good stuff. You know? Good stuff. 
I think as a player, I'm most looking forward to watching Sinzar's computer freeze every time he does a 50 pull, um, because that happens like every week. So that's a lot of fun. Um, <laughs> but, but, but I think that's a, as a creator, I think I agree with Sart. Like, um, world of or Vision World, you know, it brings out a lot of like team flexibility. I think I, of as a in the last one, I think I put out four or five different clears just like with different elements and different combinations of units to try and help people who were struggling. Um, and that's what I really like about World of Visions. And we'll talk more about that as we go, just because it is it's it's technically competitive, but it's because of the way it works. It's also very collaborative. Um, and I'm really looking forward to that personally. So that's pretty cool. Oh, yeah. So then if that's what you're looking forward to, uh, what were some of your favorite and least favorite parts of the live stream? Oh boy. I like the Christmas sweaters, you know, those are the best parts, I think. <laughs> I don't know, the headbands are pretty cool. Because uh, Tony and Hiroki both had headbands. Um, I can't really think of my favorite part because this one wasn't overall that exciting, but I guess my least favorite part would be the Q and A section oh, to where man. like the Q and A section was, it was literally a one question. It was such a nonsense question. And the, the reason that was more frustrating than ever this month is because there's like a lot of different topics that people have been discussing that are concerns in the community. And of all the stuff they could have chosen to discuss and, and do Q and A's about, they picked such a complete nonsense question that I can't imagine anyone realistically asking this question with like conviction and caring about the answer. And that's the only thing they chose in the Q and A. And it's it, it that was my that was my least favorite part of the live stream. Mm. Definitely, I would say low hanging fruit with that question um, and a very non committal answer that does not make any sense to me. And we'll talk about that when we get to the question because I do actually have slides on that. So that's exciting. Um, okay. I'll, uh, I'll say my f um, favorite part was the the fact that they are going to give um, a non-global uh, exclusive unit something with morale scaling. Um, I'm I'm not personally going to you know go for cloud, um, but I am glad that they are actually sort of keeping the word on that that promise that they made and. Um, you know, I think that's more for other people that do enjoy those units from 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 the series that are not necessarily global exclusive, especially people who play JP and global and would like to actually be able to use JP units in Clash of Wills. So that's nice. Um, and then, yeah, the least favorite part was the fact that there was no mention of Clash of Wills. So, uh, yeah. <laughs> okay. So. My favorite part of the video was probably actually Tony, because I feel like he, like they went back and did their whole recap of 2022, which was three whole pictures of the two of them. Um, but I feel like Tony has actually come a long way. I feel like he understands the game at least better enough that he can speak about it intelligently, um, seems to at least have some degree of familiarity with the terminology. So it's not like, dropping him into this potentially losing situation at the anniversary to fill shoes that can never be filled. That being said, um, there was a very substantially noticeable lack of energy in this stream. And it was to the immense detriment of the production as a whole. Because when anybody who is supposed to be the face of a game like this that's you know six and a half years old and is supposed to be involved in the community at all and you can't muster up the ability to be energetic or excited about it or at least look like you are man that's that's so aggressively awful and i did not see anybody who was watching the stream in any capacity have anything positive to say about the energy in the stream. Not that there was a lot for there to talk about. It's not like they just showed us, you know, winter snow bunny Sylvie with skis and ski poles and a snow bear or whatever, which would have been dope. Gumi, listen. Um, but <laughs> it, you have to at least be excited 
to be the face of a game. Because it's a game, and it's supposed to be fun, and you have to look like you're having fun talking about it, and there was absolutely devoid of any excitement. Yeah, man, it was atrocious, you know? It was extremely atrocious. It could have showed more empathy, energy, and all that, you know, to motivate people to pull, but no. Yeah, very lackluster. Totally agree. Um, and you know, I, I mentioned this before uh, before we started this that you know, thing this shouldn't have even been a live stream. To be honest, it should have just been something pre-recorded. Be like, here you go. Here's the updates. Um, it is exciting because yeah, you know, you've got. New Vision Cloud, the the latest cloud remake unit coming out. You want to sell the unit, but but really, I mean, you're absolutely right, um, D. Barry. That there was just no energy, and it, it really just sucked the life out of the room. Which is really a shame. I mean, we're coming two weeks off the heel of a near live stream, which was great, and everyone was excited about it. And near itself brings enough energy that people care. But this just, I don't know, man. This this one was hard. This one was hard to watch. Mm -hmm. and like how, how do you not know how to smile and wear a christmas sweater at the same time it's it doesn't make sense yeah the, i i will say probably one of my favorite things about the whole experience is, and this is going to sound weird because i think there was a lot of negativity going on in chat but i think chat was my favorite part is because i did actually see a lot of people like coming to like defense of the game and like what they were doing and like hey you know give give them a chance and like people people were actually trying to do their best to try and rally some positivity in the chat um, when there was a lot of negativity about the kind of stuff you know Sinzar was talking about like all the community issues and issues with you know things that have been going on in the game lately that that need to be addressed but haven't been yet um and people were trying to be positive and i think i think that was probably my favorite thing um but I have to agree with with whatever everybody's kind of said about the energy. Uh, there, there was a one point, and I, I remember writing it to you guys as, as we were kind of watching it and prepping it, um, where I believe the comment was something along the lines of, yes, that is very popular content. And it was just like, that's the best thing you could say about Clash of Wills? Uh, <laughs> I'm sorry. I'm sorry for what that is, but there it is. So, I think that, I think that sums up pretty much the whole live stream right there. That like that that tone saying those words yeah like yeah. you know even if you're legitimately not that excited about the stuff you're doing you know just just fake it <laughs> please i do it all the time same i'm really <laughs> yeah, same good at here, it you know? <laughs> so speaking of what did what did you what do you wish you got to see tonight that you didn't get to see what were something what was something you wish we heard more about tonight that you didn't um Whoever wants to go first. Clash of Wills. Say Clash of Wills at the same yeah. time. Yeah. <laughs> Clash <Yeah>. of Wills. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Definitely. Um, I, I was actually kind of hoping for them to say, "Hey, we realized, oops, like we didn't make a two chain properly. We're gonna <laughs> fix it." That would have been that would have been fantastic. But uh, wouldn't it you be know. great if they admitted that they did something wrong without Hiroki having to come on and do it himself? <laughs> You are not authorized to make that comment, sir. Also, <laughs> something I was wanting to hear more about was uh, the the unit upgrade stuff that we mm -hmm. just gave me because uh, mm -hmm. um, Reno is supposed to be getting silver crowns as well, uh, and that was you know they talked about how he's getting his unit specific um, cap. That's actually this is kind of kind of kind of funny here. That's almost like a negative, the fact that they're doing that. They're giving the unit specific. So for those of you that don't play JP, do y'all like even know what I'm talking about? The unit specific yeah. enhancer stuff? I do. Yeah, the yeah. silver crowns. Uh, more than the silver crown. So units, um, mostly the event units, they'll get custom specific stat pots, door pots, cactuars, et cetera, that can only be used on these units. And like, for example, if you're someone who already had Reno and like already, you know, crowned him, not crowned him, um, what's, the, what's the word? Uh, door potted him yeah. with the past and all. You get these extra things that are only usable for him. You got to go through and like delete them to clean. It's just a big headache of a goofy system. I don't know why they created it in the first place. Like, it's not like these stat pots are a precious commodity. They couldn't just give us normal stat pots. They give us customized unit specific stat pots. What is the point? And I was hoping Global would like fix that. And because Global is usually really good about that. Global is very good about fixing a lot of JP mistakes. And they're not doing that here. And that was a little disappointing. That, it's not that, the biggest deal, but 
it it's a quality of life thing they should have done. That was something I was going to ask you about when we get there because uh, Justin said specifically door pots for Reno. Mm-hmm. And so I mm-hmm. wanted to ask you about that because that seemed like a really odd concept to me. Um, but we'll, we'll touch on that in just a minute, I guess. That's, that's oh, a very yeah. odd concept in general. We just we just streamlined the fusion material yeah. inventory system. Why would we now go convoluted again? Yeah. All right. So then the very the the here's the big debate: Who wore it better? <laughs> Tony. Tony. I, Tony I, omitted candy cane I, antlers. Yeah. I, I, I gotta appreciate someone that goes all the way and does the head the headgear. You know, I'm I'm the I'm the kind of dad like I just did a Christmas party with my my uh with my family yesterday and you know I had the the headgear on too, you know. I'm not I'm not uh, I'm not too proud to say I can't wear, you know, antlers on my head. I love it. So mm-hmm. I, I appreciate that he went all the way there. I just love that the sweatshirts or the sweater said dashend all the way and it had a had a dachshund on the on it. It's it's, it's fantastic. Amazing. It's fantastic Amazing. puns. Yeah. Amazing strong commitment across the board yeah i'm a little upset he didn't wear christmas ornament earrings but we can we can overlook it you can't see his ears hey but you could have seen the earrings you <laughs> just gotta commit that's true you gotta commit gotta commit any any uh christmas sweater feedback from you Sinzar? um i'm not really much of a christmas sweater person but i would have to also give the give the win to tony because like like y'all said he he went he went for it you know more so he went all the way so you know, Tony wins this one. Good deal. On, I do on, want to just point out real quick. Yeah. Oh, oh, sorry. Uh, just a, a, a quick note. So, um, you know, living here in Australia, we actually we don't wear ugly sweaters. We wear uh, ugly rash guards. And so it is for for any Aussies out there who don't understand why they're wearing sweaters. You know. <laughs> Thank you for that bit of cultural diversity. I like that. <laughs> Good to know. Good to know. I've actually I'm never sure been. I've always wanted to go there, so this is this is neat to have you. Thank you so much for being here, by the way. <laughs> um, okay, so let's talk serious here for just a minute. Uh, here, here we go. Our first new Neo Visions unit, not just Cloud, not just uh, Cloud Final Fantasy VII remake, Cloud Strife. <laughs> is he the first Cloud Strife? He is the first Cloud Strife. Yeah, he. Oh is. man, see, clearly you the get best him. of them all. So to talk briefly about the unit, mm-hmm. um, Cloud is, uh, and at the current time on Global, he should be one of the highest bursters in um, in Lightning Element. That's a very important distinction for the Lightning Element. He should be one of our top bursters for like Dark Visions content. Um, and even in Clash of Wills, like a, a Thunder Week Clash of Wills, it could be worth bringing him just as is from JP because like he is, you know, a slight power creep from what we currently have. So he's a good burster for the dark visions tryhards you're gonna want cloud um as far as his clash of wills viability they're giving him morale and from the preview in the next slide it shows that he's getting morale on um on his skills so that seems to be the upgrade he's getting so now depending on the level of damage it it could be you know the best damage dealer ever Mm -hmm. but i i find it hard to except that that will still be worth in Clash of Wills because even someone as basic as A2, you know, she's still doing a lot of other stuff in Clash of Wills. For example, her, um, I forget the name, but off- offensive combo mm-hmm. is, is filling like 500 morale per turn. So you do that in off turns. Cloud is going to have like, he's going to guard for eight of your 10 turns in Clash of Wills. He'll hit for the for the threshold and he'll hit again for the for the killing turn and like the end he's not doing anything you're else. gonna give him calamity border in his in his non-damage dealing form exactly like it's <laughs> and and again depending on the level of damage if he's all of a sudden doing 40 percent more than 2b and a2 then that's all you need is damage sure but if he's like doing on par to chizuru and sky or something and he's doing like nothing else. Like Sky does accuracy down, 87 defense breaks, you know. So I don't know. For that, we have to see the whole kit in the data mine, I guess. Now, um, I've, from watching you talk about him from the JP side, doesn't he have built into his kit um, the like um, the Neovisions Titus STMR effect? 
Yes, yes, that is um, that is uh, that is pretty much every single premium unit going forward has that built in. So just for free, the first five turns you've got the tightest effect. They do not stack, so just like it, it frees up a slot basically. Okay. Um, but yes, and also his damage is kind of balanced around those folks those first five turns. So if you're not, um, you know, that's why that's why I'm a little wary in Clash of Wills because after those first five turns, you drop down to an only thirty percent amplify. Your big burst is gone. Your special um, LB modifier is gone, and he's gonna. I don't know. We'll see. I guess. Well, and if last month's what? Clash of Wills is any indicator of why you need to be able to burst multiple times. Mm hmm. Mm hmm. Go ahead, Clad. I mean, what if they give him like morale abilities like other units too? Like, so so he doesn't have dead turns and whatnot. Oh, absolutely. If, if they give him something like Yoshikiri, remember when Yoshikiri got his upgrades? Mm -hmm. They, I forget what it's called, they added a once per turn morale fill, kind of like, you know, um, Ling had at the time. And at the time, it was relevant because that's before we had, you know, uh, Chow levels of morale per turn. But something like that would be great for Cloud. So give, give him something to do on the off turns. And it is possible he gets that. You know, the, the, the preview only shows three skills. You know, maybe he does have a once per turn morale fill of 500 morale. Or something to even even like an auto cast. Oh yeah, yeah exactly, I'm, exactly. I, I hope so, man. Something like my uh, interpretation of that skill might just be that at ex two, um, it gives you an ability that applies morale modifiers to his existing skills. It's kind of the only impression that I took from it, because that would be the only yeah, way that they could do that without having to completely redesign his whole kit or give him something completely brand new. Yeah, that would be yeah, true. That's what I thought know. too. But I also don't know how the coding works for that, so I don't know if what I said is actually more complicated. <laughs> yeah, it wasn't exactly clear. Like I, I, I was wondering if it was yeah, is it boosting abilities he already has with morale, or is is it boosting, or is it boosting some skill he's going to already have that they didn't really? Yeah, it wasn't exactly clear. So I guess we'll just have to yeah, wait and see. It's like it's not clear, but I think it would be easy to change a unit because JP changes our units, so wouldn't it be easy to change their units too? Based on this preview and based on my limited knowledge of the way the game is like coded, I, I believe it's easier for them to add a new skill instead of editing an existing skill. Because when, when they edit an existing skill, and we've seen this many times in the past, when they merge the JP code, the edits get overwritten, but the additions do not. So what I think this is, is gonna be kind of like the modifier boost that like Esther has when Sylvie's in the party. It just won't, it just won't have like a unit restriction. It'll just be a universal thing. So like every turn, it'll auto, auto cast a modifier boost with morale scaling to his skills. So that mm -hmm. way it's for, on the Gumi side of things, it's a simple add one skill, don't edit the kit whatsoever. You just add one extra when we merge updates in the future, this won't get overwritten, this won't get broken. Um, so it'll just like, you know, his uh, Buster style, whatever, does, you know, 100X damage. In Clash, it'll do 100X plus X per morale. So like a thousand X, just throwing out numbers as an example. Yeah. And he is like other, recent JP units that we've gotten uh, with a 150 amp, I assume? Yes, to Thunder. One time per fight for one turn. Okay. One effective turn. Yeah. Exciting times. What do we think about the gear? So we've got Cloud's Clothes, um, Attack 140, Defense 55, um, Activates Heroic Aspirations, Boost Equipment Attack by 100 when single wielding with both hands uh, is for the STMR. I love his STMR because it frees up a materia and all that. It has 100% true dual double hand and whatnot. So I think it's really good. And it's just as good as morale I mean, clash gear too, I think. Hey, hey Sin. It is not Titus's STMR just better than his own before him? Um, the The... I can't really see the, the fine details, and I forget the exact details, but um, uh, the, the Titus STMR, the LB passive, doesn't work on Cloud. Well, they don't stack. He has it already as a, as a natural thing. Um, oh, as, far, as far as the stats, um, I do know Cloud with his own STMR, you want that to cap his double hand without wasting other slots. With his own STMR, he's at 400 double hand. Without it, you'd have to make up the 150 elsewhere. So um, 
also you do, you don't want to use his trashy TMR. So you pretty much always want to use his STMR on himself to activate the trust passive and to cap off his double hand. And so speaking of, I'll go ahead and read that to you. The, the TMR is boost LB damage by 50% and physical and magic damage against humans and machines, 50%. Yeah, like it's, it's, it's not the worst, but like it's yeah. uh, Cloud personally doesn't need it. So like, you know, having to use that is a handicap if you don't have the STMR. He doesn't need the, uh, the he, they didn't short him 50% LB damage just to spite you? Um, on global, Tifa's STMR stacks. So his best oh, slot that's right. will be will be two Tifa's. Yeah, on JP, oh. he's got to use Aerith's STMR, which has no LB damage on it. But on global, we've got that extra 50. Nice. That's lovely. Cool. All right. Um, so there we go. We've got Cloud t t talked about. Um, and then what about this guy? How, how would you guys say his name? I say Barrett. <laughs> Clearly, it's Barrett. It's I don't know. Barrett. <laughs> it's Barrett. Like Barrett. Barrett. Yeah. Well, well, the, 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 this we should have an official answer for because isn't the the remake like voiced? So how do they say it in the remake? I have not played. Like it. Prince, he's he's Raspberry Beret now. That's clearly, what it is. I like it. No, it's yeah, I, I mean, yeah, I like Beret. Beret works perfectly fine now. <laughs> So, is it just me, or does he have the same sprite as NBA Barrett? Oh, it's identical. When I was when I was building my teams for the most recent Final Fantasy VII event on JP, I went and stuck the Neo Vision Barrett in the vault because I kept putting the wrong one on the teams. Mm -hmm. Jeez, that's wild. That's so wild. So he's a tank. Admittedly, though, he is the one character I probably throughout the entire game that doesn't really ever change his appearance he puts so on I, a sailor suit on the boat <laughs> in the original game oh no you're right yeah yeah i know right sailor ba barrett and if i remember right he hates it all right so he's a tank um yeah he's uh so he's basically the non-premium version of jack Okay. Um, the, the the premium jack uh so it it feels like jack was an experiment in jp that kind of flopped um he wasn't that popular he wasn't that good remember on global he got buffed a huge amount on jp mm -hmm. he is not buffed so he is just not great on jp so they pretty much reprinted him the almost the exact same kit barrett is just the fire version and non-premium but otherwise he is like he is jacked with a copy kind of the same way like von and emperor are the same unit just different element well, Barrett and Jack are the same unit. Uh, Barrett is just fire instead. Is it the same damage too, or is Jack uh, better? Honestly speaking, I have not calculated Barrett's damage because I just haven't cared. Although because he is coming to Global this week, I will have a calculation on my sheet for him by Thursday. I just haven't done it yet. Exciting times. Yeah, I feel like Jekt was good for units that don't have a good physical tank, but yeah, so you know maybe Barrett will be good for you know some folks out there that need that and want some fire damage on a fire team like with Tyvus or something. I can see that. Now I will say, just you know, slight off topic. Um, well, on top anyway. Uh, in the current JP um, Crisis Core event, there are three EX battles that are hard locked. No. Two of them are locked to Final Fantasy VII. One of them you can bring off ground, you'll just fail a mission. But these missions, these fights are very, very challenging if you don't have Barrett. Even with him, they're quite challenging. So I wouldn't recommend anyone pull for that reason because it is on global. Things may change on global. They may even unlock the Final Fantasy VII restriction, like Final Fantasy restriction like they did for Final Fantasy IV. Mm -hmm. but it is so challenging. But he does have a very, very good use something like six months from now if you really want to plan that far ahead i'm not going to pull him for that reason but just you know i figured I'd, I'd, I'd put that out there i'm sure we'll get plenty of off banners between now and then right very likely well and lots of free pulls from the next couple of weeks so that's that's a lot of barrets coming <laughs> Oh yeah, a lot of the Barretts, a lot of blues, a lot of rainbows. <laughs> so he's an SLB. Um, his SLB is True Catastrophe, um, and he's got 500 defense. He's got Cover 5. 
um, which it has the added effect of boosting everybody's stats, it looks like, uh, which is always a nice addition for a tank to have. I think Runda does the same thing. Um, but otherwise just kind of does damage and tanks damage if I'm not if I'm not missing anything. Mm -hmm. He's uh, good at filling the LB gauge for the party as well. Oh, same, as, same as Jack. Nice. Oh, now, does, does Barrett mi mitigate... Uh, damage from specific races like Jack or no? Uh, yes, Barrett is undead and machine. I think it's it's it definitely undead and one other. I think it's machine. Uh, yeah. So it says um, it says humans and reapers for all allies. Oh, human and undead. Okay. Yeah, that's uh, that's on the SLB. Element. Uh, fire. I'm pretty sure by two hundred percent. Yeah. Okay. Very good. And here's his STMR. It's a two-handed gun with, that he wields on his one hand. Um, that is 180 attack and 220 defense. Um, fire and wind resistance 30. Um, and boost Barrett's defense by 500. I will weird. just say he often steadies it with his other hand when he's firing. So that is you true. could call it two-handed. That is true. <laughs> and it is for him only. Yeah. So can, mm. can not even NVA Barrett can't wear it? Well, no, I mean, you, you, you can you can put it on any unit, but like but, a two-handed defense gun, like no one wants this except yeah, for him. Okay. Yeah, who, no one wants I'm surprised, though, it doesn't like give the other Barrett the defense, the defense bonus, bonus though. Because they've done that before where like, you know, all iterations of Sylvie get, you know, yeah, boosts I, from... True. Yeah, true. I thought it did, but maybe it doesn't. It just says right there on the one, but that, they could be oh. a... You know, not that they've ever made a mistake on these... Um, dad, <laughs> dad's pride boosts defense by 100% when a single gun or fist is equipped in one or both hands. I like that. I like it a lot. I feel like that's kind of the, the pick between the two. It's, it's a bit situational, admittedly, but we get more defensive fists at this point than we get offensive fists. And so I don't hate it. But maybe that's just me hoping somehow for some reason that Snow's STMR gets a two-handed variant. As as someone who has pulled about 17 copies of King Bahimi, um, I feel like his is better. You're probably right. That's yeah. <laughs> that's a thing. Oh like his is unrestricted, right? Yes. Uh, and his also has defense on top of it. Yes. Mm, right. Um, we jumped over Cloud's vision card, so we'll come back to that in a second. Uh, let's let's finish Barrett up, and then we'll go talk about Cloud. Um, anything else you want to say about these, though, before I move on to Barrett's vision card? Going once, twice, yeah. three times sold. <laughs> uh, so here's here's Cloud or uh, Barrett's vision card. Um, it is EX1 and EX3, so we know he's not premium. It gives 1,000 HP and 100 defense at level 10. Um, also um, escapes death when HP is above a certain point, so that's a guts effect if I'm not mistaken. Um, and then HP and defense 500 and 300 respectively, but only for physical tanks. And boost physical and magic damage against humans by 100%, also for physical tanks only. Uh, I guess it could be okay for Lilith, maybe. I could just situation, but... sure. Yeah, it seems like a budget option. Just, I'm just gonna keep using Jack's card. Just keep using Jack's card. Yeah, well, not all of us have that, so you know. I know. <laughs> yeah, my Jack is only EX one, Mister. So, some somebody, of us didn't buy it. all of Jack's fragments when the shop so kept refreshing. Somebody didn't spam the infinite <laughs> refresh Jack shop. Uh, I'm yeah, almost uh, on my second how, EX3. Yeah, how many oh, VIP but, coins did that cost yeah. you? I don't know. I only all have them. like 28,000, so it's okay. <laughs> Goodness <laughs> sakes. Goodness <laughs> gracious, 28,000, man? How much do you I mean, You know, it's, it's, that's not an important question. Move on. How, okay. do, we, <laughs> how do we feel about uh, killers on a tank card, though? Yeah, that, that's, that's, that, that's pretty much the reason I said maybe for Lilith. Maybe for Lilith, yeah. I actually wasn't talking about Lilith as the tank. <laughs> right, because she doesn't. Um, Wait, waiting for Maeve to get her intrinsic. Oh. <laughs> maybe. Well, don't don't get your hopes up, or you'll get Melia the second time. Ooh. Oh, absolutely. So Ooh. I I, I'm... I expect I expect Melia every time. 
I'm kind of mm. looking forward to hearing what you guys say more about this one. So this is Clouds. Um, LB damage 100%, um, physical and magic damage against humans 100%, and attack 500 for Final Fantasy VII units only. Rash tier. Garbage. Excrement. Feces. Yeah. yeah. It's not it's, that great. It's bad. It's horrible. It's trash. But it's got 150 attack on it. Right. I mean, it's it's good for Cloud. It's good for Sephiroth and Tifa after their crowns. Mm-hmm. But, like, I've got some... Most people, I'm sure, have so many global exclusive cards that are just, like, better on other units. Like, the Lone Swordsman is just, like, the, the budget version. Or for those of you that pulled Knight to Grandchild for his card, it's overall a better card. I mean, like, for Final Fantasy VII specifically, this one is good. But for everyone else, it's just like you're not going to use this on anyone except those three units. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Yeah, go buy Chizuru's card in the uh, Perma VC shop. I mean, that one's great on a budget. For sure. Mm-hmm. For sure. Ah, premium units, right? What can we say? <laughs> I remember when we were really excited about their cards. Yeah. I they just, haven't been very premium I, for a while. I just spent the 50 fragments that we got for free on Tyvis just to get his card. Mm. It's still good. Ish. Kind and of. And I think, I'll, I'll, you know, I'll, it's the ones that are like very self serving or like series specific that I think are, are bad. I mean, you've got like, uh, you know, the NeoVision, the recent NeoVision Titus, who had, uh, mm. you know, that one's pretty good on a lot. Of, there's no restrictions on that one. So that's a good premium card. Mm-hmm. Um, you know, so there are a few out there, but yeah, I think too many of them are just series restricted. Like the near ones, like I wasn't, you know, I was excited to get my EX3 2B, but then I'm like, that card's really only going to go on 2B. Like, <laughs> yeah, I pretty much agree. Is... Like, I-, I think a premium card should always be unrestricted. If they wanted to make it like, you know, more limiting, the non premiums should be the ones that are restricted. And most of them are, like, you know, uh, like Renoa's card is Final Fantasy 8 only. Mm-hmm. That's how it should be. The premium should be because it's premium. You can use it on anyone. That's how, in my opinion, they all should be. Yeah, I, I agree with you, Senzar, you know? I like it. The, the like near card idea. is dead to me because it doesn't play the music. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, that hurts. That hurts. But no, I mean, I'm fine with making premium cards role-specific. I think that's fine. But, mm-hmm. like, I mean, we, we talk about Titus's card. Great. Uh, we have to probably go back to Vilk's card for the next good premium card. Mm-hmm. And then, I mean, yeah. when's the last time you used a Sephiroth card or a Tifa's card? Like, we don't, I don't know. And you should be Never. careful what you ask for, Barry, because starting from the next premium, yeah, the next premium from JP, you every see? single premium card is element locked. So you're, oh, you're, you're going to get exactly on. what you asked for. Yep. Oh, no. I said, oh, enjoy. No. You can all blame Barry no. for this. I said mm-hmm. roll locked. I did Thanks. not say element locked. See? Thanks a lot, oh, Barry. Geez. Nuance. <laughs> Nuance. We will always remember this moment. So, but it's on the internet forever. Oh, I know. I know. <laughs> per- permanently ensconced on my channel. Um, so we talked about the units, and then let's talk a little bit about the events that are coming with it. So this first event, um, Rematch Atop the Pillar, uh, gives Reno and Reno fragments. And this is where they were talking about the Reno-specific stat pots. Um as somebody who's done this event in JP, do you recall this being challenging? Um, all right, let me take this moment to please give a request to the global team. Please change and update how these free units are handled. They are the worst. They are not challenging at all. So the way you get free units in JP these days is you go in, there's eight stages, you run the eight stages, you get all the unit specific materials, like the specific pods, specific cat cores, et cetera. And then you run level eight. I think it takes like 45 times to match the unit. It is the most pointless, boring thing. You run it, it drops eight fragments and you have to farm to EX3. That is the only way you have to farm. We well, don't have to, I mean, you can skip the unit, but if you want the unit, you've got to farm to EX3 and you do want the unit because it's a bonus unit. And it's, it's, it's not challenging. There's no challenge. You go on there, you, 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 you turn one, kill it. Even with a jank team, it's fine. It's, it is grind for the sake of grind. Every time there's a new unit on Maw King, thankfully JP added auto farm. So it's not as bad. It's still just fundamentally dumb. So you go in there and you've got to just set aside an hour and a half to let it auto farm and run the stage. It takes like something like 40 to 50 times at 50 energy a pop, no less. 
um, to get EX3. It is is tedious for the sake of being tedious. And I, global, like I said before, global, this is usually the great thing of global. Uh, Chronicle Battles were the same problem in JP. Global made Chronicle Battles wonderful on global. So please, please do your global thing and fix these farming events for the free units because it, it, it's it's so dumb in JP. Now, yeah, really, I, I'm sorry, I really hope they do fix it, you know? I hate this using all that energy, you know. This is not the same Reno that we already have, right? It is. Yes. Oh, it this, is. This, this, this will actually be your third copy if you've been playing since day one. Yes. <laughs> Triple <laughs> Turks tag Just team what, coming. Just what we always wanted. But now, oh now you can use them in in a video because if you haven't gotten them one of the three times you had been handed them. You know, shame on you. Well, I don't know because the reason you would use him is because of his upgraded silver crowns, and he becomes the breaker of fi the good breaker of Final Fantasy VII with mm -hmm. his eighty-eight breaks. Ooh. Um, and then he—he's the guy you use on, like I mentioned, these really hard Final Fantasy VII lock EX fights. You can use Reno as your breaker, but you know, where's his crowns? Doesn't he also have an Obsidian Bracer effect? Uh probably just about all breakers have that it's called preemptive full break and mm -hmm. nearly every breaker has that even the global exclusive ones like kaito so mm -hmm. probably but i couldn't say one way or the other for sure because i remember taking him to a clash of wills specifically because he would like break these break before the ambush happened but mm -hmm. yeah, he, yeah he probably does yeah, yeah. cool yeah, i think his is 70 percent full break and then kaito got a nice little buff his is 80 percent full break but uh mm -hmm. yeah it's nice Awesome. Here's the second of the two events that they talked about. And this is the, I think they said this is the challenge event, like an EX fight. The Turks play for keeps for STMR tickets, crowns, pearls, and more. Whatever that means. Mm -hmm. And more. Doesn't tell us really a whole lot about it. Um, but the one that I think all of us are more excited about is Vision World. So this is Battles Begin in the City of Mako. We've got some items here. Um, really excited for me personally about the power to challenge fate five. Um, you know, I never thought I would end up using the Xenogears units again and being able to use them again this week and bring out the, uh, the, the Zohar access five, um, for some stuff has been a lot of fun. And, uh, so that's exciting if you like the final fantasy seven units, but only limited to them. What do you guys think about the rest of the gear? And uh, I recognize that fist that I literally just put on Tifa in JP after her updates, mm -hmm. so it saw use for me. Um, if I'm recognizing the left item, it's uh, is that the true double hand mage item? It's it's hard to see. From, yeah, from so screen. activates crown of magic, boost magic by fifty percent, equipment magic by fifty percent if a single weapon is equipped in both hands. Oh yeah, that I have used on JP quite a few times because I don't have Lulu on JP. So for those of you that don't have Lulu. This is like your second best option for double hand accessories. Cool. I'm assuming it's a hat and not a helm. I'm thinking Golbez here. Uh, it's, an, it's an accessory. Oh, it's an oh, accessory. Yeah. Oh, okay. oh, nice. Because you got to think back. You got to think Final Fantasy VII. Everything was an accessory. Everything was Everything a was that's right. No hats and no hats. No, no hats, hats allowed. Right. Cool. Right. But the, the fist, though, uh, has man eater and undead killer. Hmm. So that's kind of cool. I'm just a generally big fan of any equipment that has killers on it. Mm -hmm. It's it's Definitely. one of those things you just hoard them until the day you need them, and all of a sudden you're really glad you have them. Same with these on this next page. Like I, I honestly think some of these are I'm not going to go ahead and say spectacular, but for people who might not necessarily have effectively everything in the game, some of these are fantastic. Mm -hmm. I mean the 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 boots in particular. I mean it's not fan super fantastic, but it does have null stop and boost mm -hmm. def equipment defense by 50 percent with one or two-handed so it's yeah, a those boots i immediately thought of sylvie because she's always 50 percent short on her de defense tdh mm. <laughs> so there you go there Fill you in go that oh, remaining 50 yeah. i and think like immediately of arena so that my lilith will stop getting stopped <laughs> there you go mm -hmm. So it's just it's craftables, you know. But but I think what's really exciting in general is the the actual bosses themselves, and like we talked about, kind of like the collaborative nature of, of the Vision World events and stuff like that. So 
But there's more, right? Because they said that part of the rewards we get for Vision World is this. Who's excited about this? I don't know. Apparently, I'm the last person on the planet <laughs> who had any idea this existed. So I, I, have, I don't have any horse in this race. I mean, I mean, I'm excited because more killers. Sure, it's only on two espers right now, but more killers is more damage, you know. Mm -hmm. And the bird killer, especially because that one's usually. I don't know, Bird Killer's kind of hard to come by. It's not as bad as Aquan Killer, although we just got Octomammoth, so that one's not as big of a deal anymore. But yeah, nice knowing we're going to get some more Bird Killer. Yeah, you see the problem with this is, though, and you, you're absolutely right, but the problem is the Bird Killer is on Siren, who has literally no other Bird Killer. So this is uh. <laughs> kind of only going to be useful for units that are capping anyway with free slots remaining. Then you would stick them on Siren because they don't need that from an Esper, but like... Uh, that's kind of the problem with these is the, the, the ones for the ones for Ifrit were fine, but I don't get why they added the bird to Siren. It should have gone on Tetra, in my opinion. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah, for sure. So what you're saying is when we get Neo Vision's Ong, who caps Bird Killer naturally, he can just go ahead and slap Siren on. Is that what you're saying? There you go. If you were the kind of person that spends this stuff, yes. Me on JP, <laughs> these are like elixirs, and they are every single one of them are still in my vault, unused. <laughs> So oh, they man. they did say yeah. that everybody's going to get one as a completion reward for World of Visions, um, and then high ranking players, which is like everybody because it's Vision World, gets more. Yeah, and JP, that's how that's how it was. Um, the first ones were like kind of like freebies because you know new system, but after that, uh, you have to rank highly in Dark Visions to get more of them. Mm -hmm. um, I forget the exact breakdown, and Global usually changes this anyway, but I think. The top 1,000 players get one key per Dark Visions, and the top 100 get two keys. I'm going by memory. I could be way off here. But basically, the top ranks only for getting these keys. And uh, they're, they're very, very rare and limited. And to max out a single Esper, by memory, uses five keys, I think. Oof. I'm pretty sure. Oh, wow. Okay. Yes. So this is just Dark Matter 2.0. Pretty much, yeah, and that, that, that's the reason I haven't really spent any because, like, it's it's so rare. It's like, uh, not yet. So I'll put them right next to my crowns. Got it. <laughs> pretty, pretty much. So, so it's not the full fifty percent right away. It's like ten percent per node. Yeah, there, there, there. There's four nodes, one in each corner. Three of the nodes are a ten percent increase, and one of the nodes is a twenty percent increase, but it costs twice the price. So, uh, yeah, the the the, the ten percent are one key each, and you can do partials. You can, for, for example, teach Tetra twenty percent bird killer with only two keys. So you don't have to go all in. You can do partials, but um, yeah, it's five keys on JP. You know, global may change this, but this is how it works. You know, as we currently know it. Okay. Exciting stuff coming. Hope you've been saving your or and your all the stuff you need to do that in addition to getting oh, this yeah the on, on top of the keys you need uh sp and it's something like 1200 sp to max oh out my the God. yeah it's, it's very, it's very <laughs> yeah <Jeez. laughs> you definitely have been needing to have been farming i hope you have been um i've been paying attention to i still it. haven't maxed my bahamut esper oh geez I'm uh, gonna... yeah so that's pretty much as far as like the events they talked about what we're getting. Then they talked about some camp some campaigns. So I'll kind of throw these up here. Um, so the first one is just a login one where we're getting um, Setra Descendant Aerith and 50 fragments to get her to in uh, EX1. 3,000 Lapis over the span of a month. Uh, looks like actually a month and a half. Um, and a guaranteed Neo 10 plus one and 10 NV 1 10th tickets. Login stuff. This, this might let me get my third Setra Aerith to EX3. Yeah. But yeah, this is I think it's cool that they're giving her giving her out again. We can call her budget again. She's a budget unit again. <laughs> yeah. I mean, you know, uh, for, for most of us, we kind, of, we kind of look at this like, oh, it's Aerith. Who really cares? But she is still a really good unit. Um, mm -hmm. One of the best holy supports in the game. She's got Rod and Peril, Tag Chain. Like, she's a really, really good unit. And she's got killers. New Mm -hmm. mm -hmm. Yeah, so for newer players getting in for free, like that's really great. But you know, mm -hmm. like me personally, I'm working on my second EX3. So for me, I'm like, whatever. Yeah, but it's good. <laughs> yeah, I wish they would crown her at least, you know, to make her even better, you know? I still wouldn't spend the crowns. <laughs> Have you spent any crowns? Yes. Okay. 
I I did for funsies make Chow's intrinsic because I can. Okay. All right, there you go. There you go. I haven't I haven't used it, but if I ever do, it's there. It's there the next time you need him. We're also getting a weekly free 50 summon, which is in a way oh. not as good as 10 daily, but still cool. They did also say they're going to be updating the 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 pool every week for what's in here. That's good. Yeah, definitely good. I'm gonna have to do some uh, bulk fusion. I got to make sure I've locked all my all the three star units that uh, you know I need to get STMRs from all my guys and my amarants and everyone. That was mm -hmm. another thing I was gonna ask you about. Um, I don't. I've, I was looking and I don't believe there are any more mm -hmm. three stars and there four stars coming out anymore, pipeline. right? No, uh, Flip and I looked in a video not too long ago, and there weren't any in the pipeline. No, the only Neovision Awakened period remaining is X-Death, the five-star. That is, as of current time, the last Neovision Awakening ever. From now on, the, 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 the bonus event unit is always a brand new unit, and you get them through that horrible farm stage I mentioned. Got you. I, oh. I thought I saw hey, Yego. What about Car uh, Carla? Oh, too? okay. You're right. You're right. Yigo got one as well. So I got my timeline mixed up. And and Carla did. And I forgot her because mm -hmm. she's pay to win in JP and I don't have her. She's, she actually wasn't tied to an event. She just like came out. Right. Um, but you're right. Yeah. So those two. And on global, she's, you know, free. So whatever. Okay. Go ahead, Clad. No, I was saying what about Carla getting an NVA as well. Mm -hmm. And he And he just answered my question. Good deal. They also showed the producers present, so 2,000 Lapis, more tickets, more pearls, bonus presents. We know those are fun, and lots of gill, because we're all hurting for gill. Um, and then the bigger one was the um, the, the login bo the three different login bonuses for like m even more Lapis and more summons and, and lots of stuff just over the, the span of the next, you know month and a half which i think like like we said so we're talking about 50 a week plus a bunch of dailies um plus a bunch of lapis like there's just a bunch of bunch of free stuff coming our way very cool it is the season tis the season right tis the season oh yeah free is always nice guys <laughs> so this takes me to our what we thought what we all thought was pretty sad so Q and A. Oh, geez. Are there okay. any plans to replace the Perma Premium Ten Plus One, Four and Five Star only uh, that they give us every month on day twenty one with a Ten Plus One that can summon a Neo Vision? Um, and their answer was, "It's going to take us three months." It's going to take us three months to figure out how to unclick that button, <laughs> um, and the login bonus will be updated. Play, pay pay attention soon. And can I just say, look at Justin's face. It's like it's like <laughs> yeah, he knows how sad perfect. the answer is. And I'm, I'm sorry, Justin. It was just a badly timed picture that I took of this of the stream, but you know, there it is. It's like it's like you know. When the question first came up, I was like, "Wait, I I thought they were referencing the one that comes in like the like the seven day beginning of the month rewards because they did change those mm -hmm. to include a ten plus one ND. So I was like, "Oh, okay, they're doing they're going to do the softball question first, um, and then I." I, I was totally expecting more than one question. First mm -hmm. of all, like I think it's it is absurd that this was their one question for the Q and A, and I was just like, okay, whatever. But they already fixed the one in the the rewards at the beginning. So, I, I, like, do they have that much spaghetti code they got to chew through to get to the ones in the monthly rewards? I don't understand. I don't know either, man. It's atrocious that they pick that one dumb question out of anything else. <laughs> Out of all the game's bugs and all that, why that one question? Well, and not even just bugs, like things that we just like care about and worry about because they're quality of life stuff that we deal with on a daily basis. Um, all of us have felt the effects of the friends list. Um, the claim all bug still exists. Um, just there, there's so many different little little things that they could like touch on and just say hey yeah we're working on that or yeah we care about that or oh we didn't know about that or you know why doesn't your premium unit chain with the other premium unit that you release at the same time like there's just so many different things that they could have touched on rather than this ticket that literally no one cares about like i i almost i throw them just to see if i can get an all yellow just for fun you know and like i frequently do <laughs> so i don't know yeah 
Yeah, I seriously doubt this was the question, the like burning question that they get more than any other question. I don't understand. Yeah. <laughs> but please put your comments on every social media we have. Okay. Um, they also have, uh, so they put this unit, the developer selection popularity poll up for 2023, um, voting, I think they said to begin in January. Um, I know it might be kind of hard for you guys to see that. Let me see if I can make that bigger. Uh, I cannot easily. Um, who, who do you think you would pick on there if you could? Let me see if I can make it. It's a really hard question for me. Well, I know you're picking Ong, but... <laughs> Hey, let's go with I, I the really, Let's make it bigger. Yay. There we are. I, um, I love that seven star Esther is on there. Yes. Like give her some more enhancements, guys. I want the seven star to make a comeback. I mean, she had that she had that one comeback. You know, give her another set of enhancements. Let's let's kick her up a notch again. I want to bring the seven star back. Your 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 request has been denied. No more Esther. <laughs> <laughs> Ouch. It disappeared. Uh, I lost it entirely. There we go. Oh, there we go. Um, so I love that Lilith is on here and Roberta is on here and um, Ling is on here and uh, Sukiko is on here and Kaito and Elena and units that we already have multiple copies of. Yeah, I'd rather not. Carton. So, so like, I, I will always say Ong first, foremost, and always, but I. If we have to do something completely different, I'd love to see one of the six star era Vesta units get one, mm -hmm. namely Myra. I would love for Myra to have a comeback. I loved Myra. She had such a great rotation. She was so viable as a healer for so long. She was one of the first real good roll compression units who could heal and stat buff at the same time and do status ailment resistance buffs. Like she was, she was a fantastic unit, just with a really, really fixed, easily interruptible pattern. If you didn't know what you were doing, so I'd love to see her get a little extra attention. Yeah, I could see her working like a like a new and improved Kresnik. Like that mm -hmm. would definitely be really cool to see. Definitely, let her actually remove zombie like they took away from her initially. Mm -hmm. You're not gonna let that go. <laughs> Never. <laughs> Never will I let it go, and it didn't matter until the day it did. Yep. Sinzar, you've you've said in the past you would pick Barrel. You still feel that way? Uh, Barrel or Ang are my two my two picks because I like both the units. Um, another one I would like to see uh, done properly is uh, is she even on here? Oh, there she is, top right, Ella Spiris. Because mm -hmm. uh, mm -hmm. I, I thought she had a great, interesting design, but her actual in-game use just fell flat completely. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So her to be done right would be awesome very cool now a unit i would like to see a win is actually morgana mm -hmm. because it would it would complete the set with esther sylvie and like louise and units like that i want a good morgana you know she was one of my favorite villains from the ffb crystal chronicle series you know for sure mm -hmm. i think that would that would be really cool because they they really did her uh five star form really dirty so Mm -hmm. Yep. And either of the the lunar monk twin sets. Mm -hmm. Now that they've figured out how to do tag chaining, I mean, there's so much opportunity for them. I'm not gonna even attempt the names because yeah. I could never. But we know who I'm talking about. We do. They're great. Uh, right there by oh, the yeah. green button, and then all the way at the top uh -huh. next to barrel. <laughs> uh huh. Uh huh. Yeah, but I'm guessing with the lunar new year, we're gonna get one of them as a neo vision. I can almost guarantee we're getting one. That would be cool. And they'll Ian chain tag just like everybody else. That would be great. I wouldn't care. It's awesome. You know, it's fantastic. So Year of the Rabbit. Yep. And then the other one was, well, and of course now it's missing. There it is. Um, was the, this is just like what they're giving out for the, the chat with the community. Um, uh, just a bunch of energy restores, which I feel like, I don't know. I, I do feel like we need a lot of energy right now. So that's kind of good, but energy restores. Yeah. It's a present. It's a present. We should be grateful. <laughs> <laughs> um, and then where that left us was the uh, the updates for the year, which was just like you said before, like just pictures of, of them throughout the year. So, um, yeah. That was the live stream. What a year. 
<laughs> it's fine, I guess. Yeah. Um, I guess I, I kind of I will say um, I'm a little glad they didn't spend 20 minutes doing like games or whatever oh, on the stream. Yes. Agreed. For sure. For sure. It was already painful want, enough. So. If they could give me 20 minutes to teach me where and when I need to get ready for pre-sale for that shirt, though. Because mm -hmm. I'm, I'm in. I want it. I need it. That was a pretty sweet looking shirt. Oh, yeah, it was. That was amazing, you know? Yeah. Very cool. Well, um, before we wrap up, because we just hit the one hour mark, does anyone else have any closing comments or things they want to throw out there? Thank you for having us, Gert. You know, it was an honor to be in, an, in another video with you. And I hope everybody has a great, great rest, rest of them day or night. Yes, because Sart has the rest of his day ahead of him. <laughs> Absolutely. In the future. All day. <laughs> <laughs> well, yeah, I'll just I'll also say thank you so much, Gert, for having me on. I was, I'm glad I was, uh, I was able to make this one. And uh, hopefully I can make more uh, with you guys in the future. It's been uh, a lot of fun chatting with you guys. And uh, happy holidays, whatever holidays you guys celebrate this season. And uh, yeah, see you around. Enjoy your uh, seasonal rash guard. Absolutely, yeah. Christmas <laughs> rashies. That's so. So, so, so you, have, you have to tell me what even is that? Like, I'm, you know, I'm, I'm not even sure what that is. A rash guard? Uh, it's it's what you wear. It's like a skin tight, um, long sleeve shirt that you, it, you just wear. It. It's more for sun protection. You know, surfers wear them to not get rash guard when they're on their bellies on their surfboards. But here in Australia, the sun, uh, we have very little ozone. Uh, <laughs> there's a the big hole in the ozone right over Australia, and so the sun is very harsh here. So rash guards are highly recommended anytime you're at the beach or playing in the water. Gotcha. And y'all wear those during winter? Their seasons are flipped. Uh, well, it's, um, it's, it's summer oh, here. Oh, yeah. Duh. So, so, okay. <laughs> gotcha. Yeah, I didn't even think of that. You're right. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. It, it's, a, it's a big change because I grew up in the United States, so I'm. it does not feel like Christmas at all. It is people are like, you know, out there having having prawns on the barbecue and uh, i'm like what is this it should be snowing i want to be bundled up i i'm in my apartment just turning the air con down to like you know 50 degrees fahrenheit just trying to make it feel like christmas nice nice fun stuff <laughs> i will also just throw this out there in a completely unrelated to christmas thing um as of 30 minutes ago because this was something that was a little bit contentious they did release the dark visions lapis oh exciting times really or, they just yeah, released it, it in game yeah so the dark visions uh, rewards were at least in my mailbox as of about 30 minutes ago oh, just, holy crap nice i'll have to go Very check cool. that out all right all right so whoever that's important for let it be important right now uh, i think it's important for everybody who went nuts trying to get near units <laughs> yes because uh, because mm -hmm. aren't they still is their banner still open for a couple more days yeah, yeah mm -hmm. until Thursday. How nice. That's very nice. All right. Well, thank all you guys for coming and hanging out and, and hanging out on the beige carpet. And we'll see everybody in whatever comes next. Um, probably some, some news review stuff on Tuesday. And until then, be good to each other. Take care and have a great evening or morning. All right. Later. Take care, guys.